resume reader, Grosong. And today I will be reading to you from Black Coffee by Mystery Savior. Now on to Act Two, Chapter 30. Everyone suited up? We're going to a lake house, Dad. Not saving New York. Grown to striped country. Geez, when did the fun police get here? When you opened your mouth, America replied with a smug grin, causing Australia to high-five him. Get wrecked, Dad! Australia cheered, making her father poke his tongue out. No. I'll be doing the wrecking here, Missy. Okay, Boomer. America scoffed, getting another high five from his sister. God, why did that have to become a thing? You sounded so smug, too. That's because I am smug. Why? Because I just okay boomered him? That's, like, the ultimate power move. But you're... Shush. Did you just fucking shush me? Yes. Now shush. Britton turned to his wife, who was loading up the minivan with a pained expression. What does that even mean? They know I'm not a baby boomer, right? Please stop trying to understand them, Chiede. France sighed, patting her husband's arm patronizingly. It's painful to watch. Britton pouted and opened his mouth to reply when he was interrupted by New Zealand, dashing past him in front of the driveway. Basically half a kilometer away. No running! Britton called after her, which didn't slow her down. What are you, a hall monitor? America snickered, getting yet another high five from his sister. Boom! Three for three, old man! What? That wasn't even clever. You're just jealous. Of what? How cool I am. Oh, shut up. You're about as cool as a laptop that's been on for nine hours. Wait, you know what a laptop is? I thought you were just a glorified Pocahontas. Okay, first of all, racist. Britain just looked at them, absolutely perplexed, shaking his head. Canada came up behind his older brother and sister and chuckled. Dad, why do you look like that confused guy meme? Damn, Maple's right. You look just like that meme. America chuckled. Except less black. Canada elbowed him into the side causing him to hiss in pain and hold his wound, glaring at his younger brother. What gives, man? You can't just say stuff like that. What, black? Canada elbowed him again. I mean, he's right. Ow! Dude, not cool. Ren just looked confused again turning to his starry daughter. What are they blathering about? It's this dude who looks at someone really confused with a, this half smile and there's just question marks around him. It's great. Ah, I see. Britton mused, nodding solemnly. This is one of those meme things I saw on Facebook. Australia playfully glared at him with the force of a thousand suns. 
I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. You just did! Australia sarcastically groaned and rolled her eyes at her dad with a smile, stopping off down towards the driveway to meet up with her twin sister, who was anticipating the arrival of their guests. Today was the day both Canada and Ukraine's families had decided to get together for some proper bonding time. Britain had arranged for them all to stay in his expensive lakeside mansion since it had six rooms for all of them to share. The house had so many rooms due to all the children that used to live with Britain and France until they moved out, like America's sister, Fiji. Funnily enough, Fiji had moved into the lake house with Britain's permission and had been looking after it happily by herself. She often liked inviting America's states over and teaching them how to fish and make drinks, her usually being crowned as the favorite aunt, much to Australia's dismay. They're here! They're here! New Zealand squealed, jumping up and down and clapping her hands once she saw the two cars approaching the house, her black beanie almost falling off her head. Well, Amy, that was very out of character for you, Australia teased. New Zealand glared at her and quickly grabbed her wrist, twisting it behind her twin sister, causing the taller to be forced to bend over. Don't call me that childish nickname. There's my Lammy. Wrong answer! Kiwi pressed harder, only succeeding in making Australia laugh more. Nouvelle Zealand. Neck of your sister. We don't want the guests to realize they're going to be spending the weekend in the woods with a family of psychopaths. France laughed, patting her shortest daughter's arm. New Zealand made a face before releasing her twin sister, silently flipping Australia the bird when she poked out her tongue at her. Nouvelle Zealand! Manias! Nouvelle Zealand means New Zealand and Manias means manners. Yeah, New Zealand, manners! Australia snickered, mimicking her mother by setting her hands on her hips. New Zealand scowled at her. God, you're annoying. Yeah, me, 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 me. Don't mock me! Don't mock me. You're so childish. How are we related? Oh, don't be silly. Australia was adopted. France joked, smirking at her daughter who grinned back. Australia. What? Oh, God. Wait, what? The two women standing by her simply giggled at each other and walked to greet the cars as they arrived leaving Australia to stand in the brisk wind questioning her entire life. That was a joke, right? The whole family walked over to the cars that had swung their doors open for the passengers to jump out and stretch their limbs from the long ride. Nazi was going to be around each of his children with a plastic bag collecting any of the rubbish that they might have kept. Once that had been taken care of, each member of the more Slavic country moved to meet with the friends they had made the last time they had all seen each other. Belarus ran straight into New Zealand's arms, and they spun around giggling before Kiwi put her back down, and they began chatting up a storm. Ukraine skipped over to her boyfriend, kissing his cheek in greeting and immediately complaining about how Sophie wouldn't stop kicking the back of her seat, making Canada laugh. 
Kazakhstan had trouble getting out of the car due to his wings being caught in between two of the car seats, so Australia came over to help him, shaking her head at him while he blushed from embarrassment. Sophie was about to run over to Australia, too, but quickly got scooped up by his doting German grandfather, who joined USSR by the other married couple. Germany and Poland looked around awkwardly before America waved them over. Yo, germs, Polsky, what up? Germany gave him a relieved smile and grabbed Poland's hand, leading him over to the waving striped country. How are you guys? We missed you at the ice rink. Germany blushed, rubbing the back of his neck and looking at the bright green grass. Oh, yeah, we were hanging out. Ooh, were you on a date? America teased with a smirk. N no! Germany squeaked, causing Poland to laugh cutely and make him blush more somehow. Oh yeah, then why are you two holding hands? The two European countries looked down at their conjoined hands, and Germany jumped away with an embarrassed screech. Poland just blushed, looking away and holding his hand. Morning Star snorted. I ship it. Wait, really? I didn't think you'd be one to do that. I'm full of surprises. Don't antagonize him. Poland chided, making America hold his hands up in defense. Okay, okay, fine. Can you tell me where Russia is then? Poland raised an eyebrow. It was now his turn to smirk. Why? America held the poker face, looking away behind his glasses. How can people even tell if you're looking away? None of you have pupils. You have black eyes, for Pete's sake. No reason. Just wondering. Uh-huh, Poland said skeptically. He's on to you. I don't know what you're talking about. He's around the other side of the car. He said he was checking a tire because he thought he had run something over while driving here. America clicked his tongue against his teeth, making finger guns. Thanks, my main man. Now, I'll be leaving you two lovebirds alone. Germany made a few more flustered squeaking noises while Poland just rolled his eyes with a smile chuckling as he purred. Go get him, tiger. Yep, definitely on to you. America blushed and quickly went around to the other side of the deep cherry red jeep that Russia drove to his house. He was met with a cloud of smoke and a Russia leaning against his vehicle, reading from a small black book. Smoking kills, you know, America chuckled, echoing the words Russia had said to him the second time they'd met. Russia swiveled his head to meet his guest, smiling when he laid his eyes on those iconic scarlet stripes. Fancy seeing you here, America. What, at my house? America snickered, leaning against the car next to him staring up at the sky and the clouds crawling lazily into the bright blue expanse. He glanced down and noticed the small book in Russia's hand. Why was he reading it? What's that? America asked, nodding towards the journal clasped in his friend's vermilion hand. Russia's eyebrows raised, and he instinctively slipped it into his pocket smiling down at America to brush it off. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Now, come on. I think I heard your father calling. 
Russia walked past America, dropping his cigarette on the ground as he disappeared behind the car. Morningstar raised an eyebrow, crossing her arms. He's hiding something. I know. Do you... Do you think it's about my eyes? Do you think he was freaked out about them? I... I don't know. I don't think so. Thanks, I guess. But what about the book? Aren't you going to ask him about it? America shook his head, taking off his sunnies to rub his temples before sliding them back on. It's his thing. He can tell me if he wants to. Morning narrowed her eyes. He's acting very suspicious. America frowned. That he is. And that's the end of this chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, I'd like to invite you to join the Discord, which is linked down in the description below. That being said, I hope you have a nice rest of your day, night, or whatever it is for you. Just enjoy your time. And I will see you tomorrow!